Welcome to KXA News today. Austin ISD is responding after it says people held signs outside McCallum High School with hate speech. The principal saying those messages are in direct opposition to the school's values. It says officers arrived and the people left within an hour. Parents with concerns can reach out to the school district. And ahead of Veterans Day, which is Monday, today the University of Texas is honoring the World War II UT students who died while serving. It's part of an annual reef lane service. There will also be a memorial with the names of those students on a bronze plaque. And today a new affordable housing community is opening in San Marcos. It's for people who make 60% or less of the median income. That community is called Centro 35, right off I-35 and Center Point Road. And in San Marcos, police are currently searching for a suspect or suspects after a series of worrying crimes. Officers receiving multiple reports of suspicious activity and sexual assaults at an apartment complex. Thanks for being with us. I'm Tom Miller. I'm Sally Hernandez. And according to police, this happened at the Copper Beach Apartments on Mill Street. This was between October 31st and November 1st. The suspect was spotted looking through windows, but then things escalated. One victim telling police that she was asleep next to her boyfriend when she woke up in the middle of the night to an unknown man standing next to the bed and touching her inappropriately. It's currently unclear if there are multiple suspects or just one. Uh, a locked door would be the minimum. I would also encourage um, all of our tenants to also close their blinds at night. This person is seems to be sexually motivated, so there's an aspect of voyeurism. Police have a vague description, a heavy set white or Hispanic man, approximately six feet tall, with spiked or combed over hair. If you have any camera footage or know something, reach out to San Marcos Police immediately. First warning weather with meteorologist Kristen Curry. Well, good morning to you. Let's start with a look at clouds and radar. Quite a bit more cloud cover out there this morning compared to what we had yesterday. And even a few showers getting an early start out towards eastern Bastrop County, moving into the bottom of Lee County. These at this point are pretty isolated, but they'll grow in coverage and intensity through the day. Live look outside. You can easily see those clouds hanging over the skyline on our West Shore home camera there in central Austin. Current temperatures are in the 60s and 70s. It is a noticeably milder morning as these temperatures are running 20 to about 30 degrees warmer than 24 hours ago. So there's there's no need for a jacket to keep you warm per se, but to keep you dry. Rain and thunderstorm chances increase in a very big way today. We'll talk more about that. Plus, plus that is the, the risk of severe weather. That's not just for today, unfortunately, and for a Friday as well. Good news is everything clears out for the weekend. So we're going to talk more about the details on the timing, the threats, how much rain to expect over the next 48 hours coming up in the next uh, first warning forecast. Tom? Thank you, Kristen. The next steps for President-elect Trump, a shift from campaign to transition team. He's the second president to be elected to two non-consecutive terms. Trump now promising to help the country heal. It's time to put the divisions of the past four years behind us. It's time to unite. Vice President Kamala Harris delivering a heartfelt concession speech in front of an emotional group of supporters at Howard University. And so to everyone who is watching, do not despair. This is not a time to throw up our hands. This is a time to roll up our sleeves. President Biden plans to address the nation later this morning about the election and the transition of power. Now, the Biden administration is making contingency plans now for a possible surge in border crossings. And it comes ahead of another Trump presidency that we just talked about. Well, two U.S. officials telling NBC News that the potential surge from would-be immigrants comes from concerns that Trump would shut down the border. The Department of Homeland Security says it has not yet seen a surge. We're, we're, we ought to be patient. We need to wait, and we'll have the results. Okay, it's a race, as razor thin as it gets here when it comes to who will be Austin's mayor. Kirk Watson has 50.01% of the overall vote in the race to keep his seat. And he needs to keep it above 50% to avoid a December runoff election with the candidate who's in second, Carmen Yanez Pulido. KXAN's Grace Reader, talk with a member of our results team about why that race hasn't been called yet. 
talk to me a little bit about why it is that KXAN has not been able to project this race yet. Yeah, Grace, simply it's because this race is too close to call. In this case, though, it's a matter of will this go to a runoff? So to avoid a runoff, a candidate has to get 50% of the vote plus one, um, and that means they win outright and they are the, the uh, declared winner in that race. If a candidate does not get to 50%, uh, it goes to a runoff election where the candidates with the two most votes will face each other in the runoff uh, in December. And this race is so close right now because Mayor Watson has 50.01% of the vote. Uh, and you might think, well, election day is over. We've already got all of the, the, uh, the votes in, right? Well, we are still waiting for some votes to come in, uh, some mail-in ballots uh, that might be arriving late, some provisional ballots that have not been counted yet. And to put this into perspective, into a little bit of context, uh, currently Mayor Watson is 32 votes above the threshold to uh, avoid a runoff. we don't know, again, how many mail-in ballots and how many provisional ballots are still to come in. Uh, the mayor did put out a press release earlier uh, that said there, that he, his campaign anticipates there are a few thousand votes outstanding. So 32 votes is the current margin to avoid a runoff. There are potentially a few thousand still to come in. And again, Grace, that's why we just cannot make a projection at this time. It is still too close to call. And that was KXN's Christopher Adams giving a great explanation on why we cannot call that race just yet. Going in depth here, there are still ballots out there, as he mentioned, that could impact the race. The Travis County Clerk's Office explains there are about 6,000 mail-in ballots that were sent out but have not been returned. And there are about 3,200 provisional ballots that still need to be reviewed. Good morning. This is a live look from on top of the KXAN studios out over downtown Austin. You can see a lot of clouds overhead. Kristen Curry looking at when rain returns to the forecast just a bit. First, though, later today, the Federal Reserve is expected to announce a cut in our interest rates again. Yeah, again, so it means lower borrowing costs on mortgages, car loans, credit cards. Another potential cut is expected during the Fed's next meeting, and that's going to happen this coming December. And the Justice Department with top officials are now evaluating how to wind down two federal criminal cases against President-elect Trump before he takes office. The move is reportedly to comply with longstanding department policy, says a sitting president cannot be prosecuted. It's going to be up to special counsel Jack Smith to decide how exactly to proceed. Sources say a speedy trial was already unlikely. The January 6th case and the classified documents matter were both bound for the Supreme Court. Good morning, this is the view from downtown Austin, high atop the Estonian camera, looking out to the west, the Lady Bird Lake there, to the left. Happy to have you here with us as we kick off this Thursday morning. And to your news, there is a new multi-million dollar public safety building that is coming to Cedar Park. Both fire and police going to be using this for training. It's big and it's expensive. $30 million facility. It does have three parts to go along with it. A 17,000 square foot training area with classrooms, an emergency operations center, and a huge apparatus bay to house vehicles for both emergency management and the fire department. This is a project that gets its funding from voter approved bonds in 2022. The city and the fire department concentrating on growth and concentrating on um, being able to cover emergency calls. Now we're able to concentrate on better training our staff. And construction is officially set to begin later on this fall. That facility is expected to be up and running in the spring of 2026. The Brady Bunch is marking its 55th anniversary. Coming up this morning, three of the Brady kids who played Greg, Peter and Jan are gonna be live on today, reflecting on the show's impact. They also have a special announcement that Brady Bunch super fans won't wanna miss. <laughs> that is coming up this morning on today. Oh, that's interesting. They're bringing back something maybe a certain generation doesn't remember mm-hmm. or have seen, but there are certain parts I think that maybe you have seen on social media, like when Jan gets hit with a football. 
Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, Marsha, 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 Marsha. I mean, I yeah. still remember watching what obviously was reruns of Brady Bunch, yeah. but like late on like Nick at Night, yeah. and yeah. so it's it's multi generational. <laughs> yeah. for sure. I think I was on the tail end of it. Yeah. Like, I I don't think I could tell you the characters. Right. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the boxes yeah. of uh, like the open, I think yes, those are pretty absolutely. iconic yeah. as well. Let me show you what's going on with your forecast, friends. So we jam. made it to Thursday. Right now, radar is mostly quiet. The exception. A couple little showers sneaking up through Bastrop County. At this point, these showers are going to be pretty light in intensity and coverage, but we do expect those to grow moving forward. Our temperatures this morning, as mentioned earlier, it is much milder. 60s and 70s out there, 69 Austin, 72 LaGrange, 64 in Lano. Remember yesterday, Lano, you were down to the 30s. Visibility is something to watch closely. Like yesterday, a few spots of fog are possible, but right now it looks pretty good. We just have so much moisture in our soils right now, especially down towards Hayes and Blanco County that uh, with calm winds this morning, it's possible we see a few of those clouds get a little close to the ground. Looking at the day planner, temperatures in the 50s and 60s this morning climb to near 80 degrees this afternoon. The rain chances steadily grow from about 20% this morning, mainly light rain, to about 60% this afternoon with the possibility of a few downpours and even the possibility of some strong to severe storms. Here's how I expect it to play out on future radar. As mentioned this morning into the early part of the afternoon. None of those showers should give us much more than maybe a tenth of an inch. But once we get into the afternoon evening, you're noticing those showers looking a little better as far as the meat on the bone here. That's where we could pick up half an inch if we're lucky an inch out of those storms. Uh, but not everybody gets wet today. The nice thing is we get another round in here tomorrow. We do see a little lull in activity overnight before that second round gets in here. But the second round will be fueled by a cold front. This front's going to move west to east. I honestly think this computer's underdoing both the intensity and the coverage for tomorrow, but I like the timing. I like the fact that it's bringing this in around 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I mean, the timing alone during the warmest part of our day is going to help keep these storms and showers alive, but that movement's going to be west to east, meaning by the time we hit the evening and nighttime hours, most of this is going to be east of 35, and it doesn't come back for the weekend. Mainly dry skies Saturday, Sunday. Low risk of severe weather today. It's one out of five low risk for tomorrow as well. We're mainly going to be watching for the threat of some damaging winds out of any well-developed storm in addition to large hail, but can't completely rule out an isolated tornado. I'm showing you the severe weather threats tomorrow because I think there's a slightly better chance of seeing a few more stronger thunderstorms on Friday. Rainfall potential anywhere from a quarter of an inch to an inch. Isolated spots of more. We saw this play out earlier this week with that cold front. Sometimes those showers get real intense right along the front and drop two to four inches of rain like they did out in Blanco. Seven day forecast 60% chance of storms today will go 70% right along that cold front tomorrow afternoon evening. As mentioned, dry skies expected for this weekend. We continue mainly dry skies Monday, Tuesday. Temperatures do take a hit. We're down to the 70s behind that cold front. Right back to the 80s we go for Veterans Day. Let me take you out west. More than 10,000 people in Southern California are evacuating from a massive wildfire plaguing northwest Los Angeles. Thousands of buildings uh, could burn in the mountain fire to over 14,000 acres. In fact, this fire went 10,000 acres in just four hours yesterday, fueled by really strong Santa Ana winds. Unfortunately, 0% contained as of the last update, with predicted wind gusts continue to be anywhere from 50 to 100 miles per hour. Humidity bone dry out there in the Southern California area as well. Those conditions expected to be extreme, if not even life-threatening with that fire behavior today and to tomorrow. We'll, of course, keep an eye on this for friends and family in the area. Well, Kristen, thank you. Governor Greg Abbott is doing a victory lap with the results of the presidential election, and it appears his efforts to push for legislation to allow public funding for private schools might be successful in the next legislative session. Abbott attempted to push it forward in the last one, but opposition from within his own party kept it from moving forward. So the governor threw his support behind candidates who would support those type of bills up for re-election. And those efforts appear to have paid off. Governor Abbott spoke yesterday in the East Texas town of Tyler. I made sure that we would elect Republicans to the Texas House of Representatives in sufficient number to be able to pass a school choice plan just like the Texas Senate has passed many times. 
Lawmakers can begin filing bills next week. The next legislative session starts at the state capitol in January. Taking a closer look, a poll in July found broad support among Texas voters for plans to provide families with private school subsidies. The University of Houston and Texas Southern University found 66% would back a bill offering universal vouchers to parents, while 69% say that they would support the creation of education savings accounts. This morning, we know that Republicans are going to control the White House and the Senate starting in January. Still unknown, though, control of the House of Representatives. The Associated Press has not yet projected which party will control the House next year. 218 seats are needed, and as of now, you can see Republicans are in control of 206, Democrats 191. The rest of those races still need to be called. Members of the 119th Congress opened their first session on January 3rd. And both House Speaker Mike Johnson and second in command Steve Scalise are seeking re-election to their current leadership posts. That is if Republicans maintain control in the House. The development is according to letters they sent to colleagues yesterday. Both Louisiana representatives are pledging to support Trump's presidency and maintain a Republican agenda. Security is ramping up at President-elect Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence over in Florida. And this, of course, is following his election win. Law enforcement is stationed around the estate grounds along with the U.S. Coast Guard patrolling by boat. And as the election winds down, we're getting a better picture of who voted and why. Joe McCoy takes an in-depth look at the polls. Exit polls give us an insight into how Trump won the election last night. And I want to break down some of the key statistics that help propel him back to the White House. Now we have to start with a topic voters consistently said was their number one issue this election cycle, the economy. According to the exit polls, 68% of the electorate thought the economy was not so good or poor. For the 33% who thought the economy was poor, 87% were Republicans. Also, 46% said their family's financial situation was worse today than four years ago. 81% of people who felt this way were also Republicans. And even though several metrics show the economy is strong right now with consumer spending and the country's GDP continuing to grow, many don't feel that personally as interest rates sit just below 7% and prices in general are roughly 20% higher now than when President Biden took office. And what about first-time voters? Well, 8% of voters this election were first-time voters, 56% of which were Republicans. For comparison, in 2020, 14% of the electorate was first-time voters. However, 64% of them were Democrats. And on the topic of democracy, the exit polls show conflicting findings. 73% of the electorate said the democracy is threatened. Now you may think that this favored Harris, but this feeling was split as 51% of Republicans and 48% of Democrats felt this way. This likely implies that supporters of both parties feel our democracy is threatened by the other side. This is KXAN Sports, brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. As six-year linebacker David Benda put it, the games in November are the ones people are going to remember. For Texas, if they want to have a memorable final stretch here the regular season, the focus is probably going to be on the offensive side of the ball. They were so dominant early in the season, but in their last two games before the bye week, they've struggled a bit, especially against the Georgia Bulldogs and against Vanderbilt. Texas had a touchdown in the second quarter to go up 21-7, but after that, scored just six points the rest of the way. Steve Sarkeesian conveying a message of confidence in his offense and saying he does not want them to try too hard. Yeah, we didn't have a couple great weeks. That's okay. We're going to be all right, you know, and, and make sure that we've got confidence to go do those things. And so um, I don't overdo it with them because I just want them to know I believe in them. And, and here's why I believe in them. And here's what we're going to do to ensure opportunities for them to go make some plays. I think we've all on the offensive side have realized that we may be trying to do too much because we're trying to maybe prove ourselves after the loss against Georgia and stuff like that. So if we just get back to the basics to doing our job, and focusing on the key details that that implies then we're gonna we're gonna get back to who we were Florida quarterback situation kind of up in the air right now first string quarterback already out for this season second string quarterback DJ Lagway had been playing better but got hurt against the Georgia Bulldogs and it was third stringer Aiden Warner that came in and could be in line to start here Saturday against the Longhorns so not a lot of tape on Warner but 
Good news is for the Longhorns, veteran defensive back Michael Taff, a graduate of Westlake High School here in Austin, best friends with Ryan Lindley, also from Westlake, who played football at Yale a season ago. How do these dots all connect? Well, Lindley was a receiver at Yale, where Werner was the quarterback last year before he transferred to Florida. So possibly a bit of a scouting report there for the Longhorns. For now at DKR Texas Memorial Stadium, Noah Gross, KXAN News. All right, Noah, thank you. Coming up, a struggling part of downtown Austin looks to the city, City Hall, for help. We'll have that story on KXAN.com and the rest right here, of course, on air. And if you are listening on the KXAN Today podcast, thank you so much for joining us. Hope you join us for that story and much more as we continue to cover everything you need to know on this Thursday, November the 7th.